about a month ago, which is when this video came out, I had seen something on TikTok, like a little bit on TikTok, and I was going to watch it, but there was so much other content to do, and I just kind of got lost. But I had seen something, a, a bit of a clip on TikTok that talked about how there is like a whole network that tries to, I guess you'd say help, for lack of a better term, like Syrian like refugees and, and people like that uh, create TikTok accounts and then get the followers required so that they can start begging on live stream. And what ends up happening is TikTok apparently takes like 70 or close to 70% of the revenue on lives, which is insane, right? For context, Switch takes about 50%. YouTube takes 30%, right? Twitch does have Amazon Prime, which is fine. It's cool, but you know, Twitch does pretty good with their, their split. Uh, PayPal takes like 10%. But anyway, <laughs> um, but TikTok takes like 70. But then on top of that, they also have to pay a percentage of their revenue to like the company that helps them. So they get like half of that, you know, 70 of 30% that they get. It's crazy. And so I wanted to watch it because it's very interesting. It's crazy. It's crazy how TikTok, I think, takes advantage of people in so many different ways. On top of the fact that they take, you know, so much money from live streams, despite the fact that they don't have a robust live stream service at all compared to like any other channel or service. That's crazy. But they also take a majority of the ad revenue for people on TikTok as well. I think it comes out to like 10, you get like 10% of the ad revenue on your normal videos. It's fucking crazy. And that's if you're in the creator fund. It's nuts. It's freaking nuts, guys. So. And what made me uh, go like, oh, I want to talk about this today is because I saw, I've been seeing them on my For You page more. I actually saw a picture. It was, it was so messed up. It was a, I think I want to see if I can find it. It was a picture of a kid that like, it looked like he was hooked up to like an IV and he was in the hospital and this, that, and the other thing. But let me see if I can find it. But then looking, it's so ridiculous. Um, Looking closer at the picture, the, you could, it doesn't even look like it's connected to him at all. It's like an IV that goes down to the floor and... And it's like not even in the kid. So I'm pretty sure it was fake. It was so bizarre, bro. It was so bizarre. So. There's a new trend on TikTok. Children in camps in Syria begging for hours on end. They're asking for TikTok gifts that can be withdrawn as real money. <laughs> But that money isn't all going to them. Damn, $14 for eight days work? <clears throat> We've been following more than 300 accounts. I guess there wasn't enough donations. Going live on TikTok, trying to work out where that money's going. What the hell is that? Somebody sent them a, a lion for 500 How people Damn. living in... Damn. Well, they did create the lion, and that was some top tier CGI, guys. I mean, look at this. Trying to work out where Michael Bay, eat your heart out. That money's going. Am I right? Wow. How people living in desperate circumstances suddenly have the phones, internet, and TikTok accounts to go live. TikTok is creating and enabling an ecosystem that runs on the exploitation of people's suffering. And why so? Yeah, but it's so interesting. Like, what what's the expectation? Because like, um, they have there's two options. One option they could keep it going. Option number two, they could ban them, and then these people can't get any money. I think the biggest issue is that TikTok takes so much of the money. It's crazy. So many of the donors come from the UK. Over a thousand pound would have been put in there, and and that to them would have been a lot, a lot of money. We've uncovered a network of companies around the world, including agencies contracted by TikTok in China, all making oh money God. off these displaced families. Earlier this year, TikTok users in the UK began to notice something different on the app. Suddenly, their feeds were full of live videos of Syrian families living in tents. Apparently, that $14 the guy got was like 35,000 Syrian monies. I don't know how that works. I wonder what the standard of living is. Asking for help. 
This is the account I've been using to follow some of these families in Syria. And you can see here, all of these accounts are live right now. On average, 64% lower than the United States. Interesting. And Rent is 90% lower than the United States? Damn, I'm going to Syria. Just actually, kidding. if you watch some of the videos, you can see there's a pattern. The children seem to be saying the same kind of things. They're asking for likes and gifts. And if you listen closely, sometimes you can hear there's a voice off camera actually telling them what to say. Over the past five months, we've been following hundreds of TikTok accounts posting the same type of videos to find out who's behind this trend. A lot of them are displaced uh, from their uh, homes uh, because they're destroyed because of the war of what's uh, in the last 10 years in Syria. That's crazy. Mohammed Abdullah, a local journalist, visited a camp near Idlib where families are going live on TikTok. There are hundreds of camps in this. Wow, it looks like a typical American trailer park home. Damn. This part of Syria. Also, I'm going to be real with you, okay? In in New York, at least where I live around, you know, I live like the New York, Long Island area. I live in the good part, you know, the part where not everybody, you know, spits tobacco, fucking degenerates. I'm just kidding. Uh, no, but uh, the trailer parks out here are kind of disgusting. I used to fuck around with a girl in a trailer park and her house was pretty nasty, but she let me do nasty shit to her. So, you know, it all kind of evens out. But when you go into like other states where like they're probably, I guess you'd say they're poorer states, they tend to have like much nicer trailer parks, <laughs> like much nicer trailer park like um, homes and stuff. At least that's my experience from seeing it. I guess it's like one of those things where in like our bougie state, like area, we're like, oh, you live in a trailer park? You're a loser. But in other places, it's like, no, this is great. It's like cheaper, it's smaller, but it's like efficient, you know? So, you know, I think I would live in a trailer park. If it was a nice trailer, they got some real nice trailers. Have you guys ever seen really nice? Some, in a lot of places, they'll just put a trailer on a property. Um, so. More than 2 million people live in them, forcibly displaced in Syria's long-running civil war. Damn. They have limited options to earn a living. Doesn't seem like a very civil war. Sorry, that's an inappropriate joke. And for some, it's their only source of income. <laughs> Mona's husband was killed in an airstrike. She now lives with her six daughters, and Damn. she's saving up to pay for medical treatment for her daughter Sharifa, who's blind. <laughs> To go live on TikTok, you need how unfortunate at least a thousand followers. Yeah, so like they get it's like the farm like gets them to a thousand followers and then takes a percentage. Then, when you're live, users can send digital gifts to reward creators for content they like. These gifts are bought with real money, ranging from roses, which cost a few cents, to lions and universes, which cost around five hundred dollars each. Damn. $500. TikTok Live is making a killing. It's crazy how this this, uh, this this app has so much money and they're able to take so much money from people, but they barely show it, give it back to like different creators in different capacities. It's fucking nuts. Especially these people, you know? The gifts are converted to a virtual currency that you can withdraw as cash. Damn, they got more complicated since the last time I cashed out. But not all that cash is going to the families in need. Hamid also lives in the camp and is known as a TikTok middleman. He sold his livestock to buy a phone and now works with 12 different families, setting up their accounts, filming, and withdrawing their cash. Damn. <laughs> Let's, God, well, okay. I mean, like, okay. We got to criticize this guy a little bit, too. The only difference is this, he's in, like, a, uh, probably a really rough situation, so I get why he'd be doing this. But what he's doing is probably a bit exploitative as well. How much is he taking? <laughs> Hamid told us he buys British SIM cards to get British viewers because he says they're the most generous gifters. Okay. TikTok's algorithm suggests content based on where your SIM card comes from. We found kiosks selling international SIM cards near the camp. That explains why TikTok users in the UK had been seeing these videos. Damn, I've, they, I get these things as well. They're starting to try American SIM cards because it ain't working. I ain't giving nothing. But also, I kind of realize, I don't know, it's just crazy to me. Like Keith, who donated 300 pounds in TikTok gifts to a family in Syria. Yeah. There must have been about 50,000 people that came on that live. Even though the, the man had his legs blown off and he had his arm blown off, uh, he was the most positive guy you could ever 
me, I'll speak to, I probably think over a thousand pounds would have been put in there. And, and that to them would have been a lot, a lot of money. Yeah, I feel, I think it's a TikTok take 70 and then the, the guys with the phones take an additional 50%. Of the, so like they're taking fifty percent of the thirty, I think. So it's crazy. I think that's what it, the numbers are. I feel like TikTok is the biggest issue here, though. Honestly, with how much like it's fucking nuts. They they get to siphon all this money up. Um, it's crazy. <clears throat> we get the money. We get the money. So how much of that do the families get? Hamid says most of the gift's value is taken by TikTok before it even reaches his account. He also said middlemen are getting help from agencies in China. This is only a 155 bucks, basically. He, wow, he works with them to unblock banned accounts. We give them okay. That's because TikTok says you need a thousand followers in order to go live. Live agencies are a growing part of TikTok's business strategy. They're contracted by TikTok to help content creators produce more successful live streams, which in turn boosts TikTok's profits. Damn, wait, so hold on. If I got this right, this is nuts. Wait, so you have TikTok, right? And then they will somehow to some degree or in some capacity outsource to some kind of like TikTok management. Um, I know that my, I, we're just going to say TM, TikTok management agency. And then these agencies will go around and they'll help like all these different accounts uh, get to their 1K followers. Um, and then if they get banned, they'll un they'll go back and they'll unban them. So like TikTok is, it's like TikTok is almost under, <laughs> listen, maybe this is a little conspiratorial. I don't know if that's a word, but it's almost like TikTok is like aware of these people down here, but they're like, let's pretend we don't know who they are and we'll just deal with these agencies and then these agencies can deal with them. And then this way we can justify knowingly taking 70% of the profits from them. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm being like a little bit conspiracy-esque, but it sounds like TikTok is running the system so that they could exploit 70% of the wages out of fucking Syrian refugees that have been displaced by war. I mean, that's what it feels like. Agencies we spoke to said TikTok pays them a commission according to the duration of the live streams and the value of the gifts they get. They said TikTok takes between 50 and 70% of the profits of live gifts, but they couldn't confirm the exact amount. Mm. We asked TikTok, but they wouldn't say. Of course so not. we decided to test it for ourselves. We asked local journalist Mohammed <coughs> to go live from an account in Syria and sent him $106, around £90 in gifts from another account. We were the only ones on that live stream to do so. Then Mohammed checked the balance of his account. $33, so it is 70%. Wow. are taking 70%. I guess if you're on longer, they get more money. I don't exactly know how it works, but that's still fucking crazy, bro. Next, Mohammed went to the local money transfer where TikTokers cash out their earnings. You have to go to a place to cash out your earnings there? You can't just cash it out through like a PayPal or something? That's how you do it in America, at least. Damn. From our $106, TikTok took $73. That's almost 70%. The money transfer shop charged a further 10%. And people like Hamid, who provide the phones, take a cut of what's left. What's the percentage of the cut that they take? It looks like they take about 30%. So from those $106, Mohammed would have just over $19. Wait, hold on a second. I just have to do this quick math. Quick maths. So they did $106. 70% They said 106, right? So we got 106. I think it's 106 divided by the 19.31, right? So they get that's five percent. Am I wrong about that? No, that's not right. That's definitely not right. Is there been about 20 percent of that? So like 18 percent. I think I did my math backwards. Um, yeah, about 18 percent. So you got 70 percent going here. You got so then another 10 percent. 
it's ten percent of the fucking Jesus of the thirty percent, which is three percent. So you have seventy three percent, and they're only getting eighteen percent. So that's seventy three eighty one ninety one. So the guy's taking overall about ten percent. Is wow, this is so fucking confusing? They get eighteen percent of the money though. That's fucking bananas. And often the families we spoke to get much much less. But in the camps, jobs are scarce, <coughs> and there are few other options. We showed the videos to a nonprofit called Access Now that protects people's rights online. TikTok is creating and enabling an ecosystem that runs on the exploitation of people's suffering. Yeah, so this is a clear violation of their own terms of services, not let alone, of course, uh, the rights of those people. We put these allegations to TikTok and they sent us a statement saying that this type of content is not allowed on their platform and that they would strengthen their global policies around exploitative begging. Yeah, I don't, I doubt that. And also, by the way, I, I think that uh, TikTok is the biggest exploitation aspect here, in my opinion. As for the 70% cut, TikTok insists they take less than that, but they still won't confirm the exact amount. So we repeated our experiment with accounts in the UK and Syria that weren't signed up to agencies and found that TikTok took just under 70% every time. We <laughs> they take almost 70% every time. Called Keith again to tell him what we had discovered. We found that 70% of all of the money donated would have gone straight into TikTok's pockets. Are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. Uh... It's very unfair, uh, especially to them, them families over in, in, in Syria. You've got to have some uh, transparency. And, uh, you know, to me, that it's very greedy. It's, it's greed, isn't it? It's greed. Yeah. A charity that works in the camp told us that it could help support these families as an alternative to making money from TikTok lives. Many people on TikTok are calling these live streams scams. I don't really think that there's scams necessarily. I think that these are kid, these are people that are just trying to make a living, and they are begging. But the biggest scam, is, in my opinion, is TikTok. But the struggles of the families we met are very, very real. <laughs> people have donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to them, but the lion's share lines the pockets of TikTok and its agencies. Whilst That's for these crazy. families in Syria, life continues with no change in sight. Wow. That's nuts, man. That's fucking crazy to me. That's fucking crazy. Jesus Christ. I'm actually shitting and farting right now. I want Papa God to pee on my face. But just as a friend, there's nothing weird about that. I want him to pee on my face. 